Hey everyone, Burton here with PropStream, and today I have a special guest, Paul Del Pozo, who's also a team member with PropStream, but most importantly, he is an active investor in today's market. Hey Paul, how's it going? Good, Burton. How you doing, man? So, Paul, for people that don't know who you are, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, man. So, uh, my name is Paul Del Pozo. Um, I am also a active uh, real estate investor. Um, I operate a wholesaling business from my home office uh, in Southern California. We operate uh, a market in Southwest Florida. For those that are watching, we are currently in the midst of what we're calling the coronavirus pandemic. Um, and unfortunately, that has... Um, made real estate investors such as Paul uh, adjust um, in either uh, several different ways. So that's why we're having Paul here today to talk to us. Uh, Paul, obviously being an active investor, how has the coronavirus pandemic impacted your business? Yeah, you know, man, I mean, it, there's a lot of uncertainty right now. You know, we're, we're only a couple of days into this, um, you know, stay at home order that, that, you know, most of the country's in right now. Uh, so there's, there's just a lot of uncertainty, you know, I spent a, a good part of the week really in a lot of phone calls, you know, talking with some very experienced investors, just kind of understanding what they're feeling, thinking what's going on. To be honest with you, nothing much has changed yet in our business, but there's certainly some actions that, that we've taken to kind of shore up some parts of our business to, to see if we can, you know, combat any negative issues that we start to experience, such as, you know, not being able to sell a contract or not being able to get a buyer or, you know, not being able to find sellers, which hasn't been a problem. Actually, this week for us was pretty, pretty good. We had a lot of seller leads that came in, a lot of people that are also, you know, confused, you know, people sitting at home wondering what's going on. Maybe we want to sell, maybe we want to get a dodge, but now that we have to stay at home, we're all confused again, right? With my team uh, this week, with my, my, uh, my wholesaling team this week, we had to really kind of uh, discuss what might be going on in, in people's minds, right? The conversations that we're having, you know, what, what might uh, be going on uh, in a seller's mind, what might be going on in a buyer's mind. Uh, we've certainly reached out to everybody that we've made uh, contact with or put offers out on to see where they're at, let them know, listen, if, if you're going to sell a time is time is now to go through with, with us or we're not sure where, where it's going is kind of generally the conversation that we've been having on that end. But, uh, you know, as I mentioned, really on, on the sell side, really kind of shoring up what you have for your, your buyer pool, your buyer list. In, in a bit, you and I can get into showing, you know, in PropStream what, what I'm actually doing to do that, right? My mission right now is to, to speak to as many buyers as I can and really get an understanding of where they are, you know, where's their mind? You know, some might be like, like ostriches, right? They don't want to do anything. They want to freeze their money, not do anything. They're just there, right? Trying to figure out what, what is what, which way everything is going. Others are certainly active and, and pushing forward. And, and those are the people that I want to talk to, right? So um, if those people are not on my list, right, I want more of them. And I'm pulling lists from, from PropStream and, and literally reaching out to these folks and uh, calling them and asking them, hey, where's your mind today? What's going on? That's Amazing. really been the core of what, what we've been doing this week to, to uh, just kind of shore up what we're doing, uh, but also, you know, keep my team's uh, head straight. Uh, and positive, right? Through uncertainty, you know, to a lot of the people out there that are either, you know, leaders or managers or whatever it may be, you definitely want to lead with, with a position of strength, right? You don't want to, you know, doom and gloom your team. You want to be very realistic and, and honest about what's going on, but let them know what you're doing as a team or as an organization to go forward, you know, protect them, support them, uh, and also, you know, make sure that, that we're in a good position going forward. Um, and, and what you just mentioned, it looks like that you have I've taken some initiative uh, in this situation, and I'd like to talk a little bit more about that. So what actions specifically are, are you focusing uh, more in tune right now? Now, you did mention that uh, you are focusing on buyers, and uh, I'm going to take you up on that offer. I'm actually going to want to screen share with you for Offstream and see if we can uh, have you show us exactly how you're going about building that buyers list. And after right. doing that, um, if there's anything else, uh, any other actions that you'd like to share that you're currently doing now, um, especially since people are at home, um, and again, since you're a PropStream user um, as an investor and, and part of our team member, I'd like to see how you're taking the initiative at home to sustain your business, essentially, make sure that things are still operating uh, as if nothing has really changed. I, I think more than ever right now, my business is, is a virtual model. You know, I, I operate a virtual wholesaling model. So we're fully remote. You know, again, like I said earlier, I'm here in California and my team's all over the world. We buy in Florida. So 
we are virtual, completely dependent on technology, phones, uh, uh, you know, online tools, of course, prop stream being like a necessity for us, right? And we'll get into how I use that in our business, but you know, having the right tools uh, to communicate and all that sort of stuff is really important to us. But you know, now that everybody's at home, they almost have to go into the, the, the type of business that I have, right? They're all of a sudden now having to become virtual investors, right? So um, I think more than ever, you know, PropStream is a, a, an extremely beneficial tool to really conduct business and keep it going forward. Or if, I would even say this, if, if in your current market, there's some sort of, you know, the tightening or, or whatever it may be, you can easily look at other markets now. You know, and that's a super cool thing about props, right? Like, so let's say you're in, in the Georgia market and it's just not making sense there, right? Wherever this goes, maybe look at another market, Texas, another state that's not as affected. And you can actually continue forward without taking a step back. That's that's one of the cool things that, that I, I love about using our tool here. And I love that you mentioned that, like uh, already you're a virtual a wholesaler, a virtual uh, investor, but you, you mentioned something very important. Now that everyone is buckled in at home, PropStream is as more important than ever. I mean, it was again, already helping people that were virtual investing. And now that in theory, you're stuck at home and you're not able to go out there on the streets because of curfews or because of these stay at home orders that we have. The fact that PropStream can now more than ever help you by lead generation, uh, skip tracing and marketing. Uh, I, I want to highlight that. So thanks for, for uh, shedding light on that. I, I also see, let me throw this in too, man. I see a lot of people that, you know, don't have a virtual business or right? don't have a virtual model, have offices, totally different, you know, mindset now having to be stuck at home. If you guys are stuck at home, you're not really stuck. I, thank goodness we have these tools and the technology and the bandwidth that allows us to be able to do these things, right? So take advantage of this time that we, we're inside and we, we have obviously our family and to, to stay close to our family, but we have the opportunity to keep working and keep going forward. Use these tools to communicate with our team and get stuff done. Don't paralyze, right? Don't, don't stay there. Don't become an ostrich, like I said. So um, if you don't mind, can I go ahead and project my screen? I'd let's love go, to take let's you off it. on that offer. Let's show, and let's show, you uh, let's show them what I'm, what I'm doing here with, with PropStream. Some of the basic functions that I use on a regular basis right now, especially right now, um, you know, with, with the tool as far as, you know, even comping or how, how we're going about pulling our list, that hasn't really changed much right now. Um, okay. I might start focusing or targeting different types of, of uh, sellers actually. So we, we could look at that as well. Well, let's go ahead and leave it up to you. You're the um, seasoned investor here. So where would you like us to start? Would you like to start with looking how you build a buyer's list? Looking let's do this. Let's go into the comp section first, right? Okay. So let's just pretend we have, uh, you know, leads that are coming in right now, because hopefully people out there, you know, you're just not sitting back watching the news, watching everything just unfold. Hopefully you still are making calls and you have some sort of lead gen still going on right now. Right. Do you want so, me to randomly pick a market or would you like to pick a market that you're more we, familiar what, with? Wherever your heart pleases, man, because our audience right now is obviously vast and, and, and wide. <laughs> I'm, I'm currently in the Florida market. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, I really want to show people the, the ability to kind of use it to anywhere. So let's look at our list here, uh, if you don't mind. Okay. Let's would look, you like it individual corporate or just leave it alone? No, let's just pick any, any random property right, for him right now. Right, so let's, let's look get... at this 2106 North Hudson Avenue, right? So one of the, the, this person happens to call you. You have marketing, maybe you're sending mail, maybe you're calling out, right? Maybe they're on your list, maybe not. Maybe it's a referral, maybe somebody gave it to you. Whatever it is, the lead comes into your system, right? Maybe it's not even coming into a CRM, it's simply just coming to your cell phone. Hey, I have a property here on 123 Main Street, or in this case, 2106 North Hudson, let's comp it, right? So what we do is we go and we take a first glance at this details window, right? We take a look, what, what's going on with this property? We glance at the top, all the major little details, you know, bedroom count, square footage, all that stuff there on the left, we take a look at, right? And then we also take a look at the estimated value. You know, sometimes when you're talking to sellers or maybe they've called you, you've called them, they're throwing out all sorts of crazy numbers of what they want. They'll throw out a number. You know, you can look at the estimated value. You can kind of use this as a quick and dirty number. If they're like, oh, well, I want $2 million for this property, we know they're, they're way off the mark, right? Uh, but if they're like, well, I want 800 or 600, 700, we know you're in the general ballpark, right? So that's our first step in our process and in our business, right? And we're, this is what we're doing now. This has not changed at all. And this is actually how I recommend, you know, people look at their comps and look at the leads that come in, right? Do your due diligence on that property. Make sure that the information that the seller is telling you, and I'm going to be speaking now from the perspective of speaking to them on the phone because we're home, right? 
Um, obviously, there's, there's right. investors out there that have acquisition managers that are on the field, knocking doors, having appointments. Uh, but from the perspective of talking on the phone, you know, when they're providing this information to you, you know, sometimes things are exaggerated. Sometimes they tell you it's a 5-3 when it's a 1-1, one, one, right? Or much larger <laughs> footprint, square footage is 2,000 feet to tell you. And you look in here, it's like 400 feet, right? Crazy stuff. So I use this in my business to kind of verify the information that's been told to us. And we look, like I said, we look at the estimated value. Are we in the ballpark? If we are, you know, we have a conversation. If we're not, we have another type of conversation. Uh, but then we go into comps, right? We go into our comps and nearby listings down below. Right? This is our, our, our general process here. So we then go into the public record comp section and we start using this tool to really find the most like properties, right? Like the, basically you want to dial this in and use the different filters. First, we can stop, uh, start with the sale date range. I typically do six months, right? So that... That will be, you know, put us about September, mid-September-ish. And you can tighten up your square footage. I will say various different markets will have different specific needs, right? Like you, you might have markets that are super, super dense, right? There's a lot of transactions, a lot of properties, a lot of different comps, a lot of other ones to compare to. Um, so you might not need such a large sample. So the cool thing about what we have in, in PropStream is you have the filters where you can really dial in to find everything around that makes the most sense. Because in That's reality, right. comps are, you're looking at all the transactions that sold that are the most like that property, the subject property, you know, that, that are the most comparable, hence the name comps, uh, to your subject property. So here we can tighten, we can tighten up the, the square footage a little bit here uh, on the min and max, let's say uh, 1,100 on the min and uh, let's say 1,500 on the top. Right. And then on the bedroom and bathroom count, let's tighten that up exactly to what it is. Three, two on the min max on both. So we first take a look to see exactly of that same footprint what's there. And we see here that we have, uh, let's scroll over. We'll take a look. We'll see what we have here. We have two condominiums, right? So this doesn't work for us. I would open up our distance a little bit here, go to a full mile. And now we have some additional properties. It looks like uh, condos. Right? What are, what are you seeing over there, Burton? Yeah, well, we have Same all these condos. As well. Condos. Let's, Let's uh, open up our footprint. I would say our square footage. Let's open that up to 1,800. Let's see what single family homes we have. And this is the exercise that you run through, right? As you get more experience with using the tool, you start to, to know how to use it best. And also, I'll say the little gear, show them the little gear, Burton, uh, where we can actually select the columns. This is super helpful. Because when you're comping a lot of properties in a day, you don't want these columns that you're not looking at really kind of distracting you. You know, when I'm going through 20, 25 comps in a day, I want to just look at the exact columns I need to make my determination um, of the properties that are the most comparable to the oh, subject. Oh, that makes property. sense. Uh -huh. Right. So in this instance, you know, maybe I would take out APN, maybe property type, sales situation. These are things that I can filter in the filter set. So I don't necessarily need them in front in the columns. That makes sense, like pool being present yeah, or not. And and anything like that. that doesn't make sense, right? Sometimes I just break it down to bedroom, bathroom, uh, year, uh, year built, uh, square footage, how much it's sold. You know, that, those are really the most important data points to me in most of the areas that I buy in. All markets will have its specific variables that you'll know in your market that you're currently working. That makes definitely sense. And so I take it, not only are you using public record comps, do your team, um, do you guys use MLS comps as well? Man, perfect timing with the question, brother. Let's go <laughs> into MLS comps, right? Because we look at public record, we want to take a look at everything that's sold and has obviously posted to the public record. But we also take a look at the MLS comps. Uh, we specifically take a look at the MLS sold and the MLS active. So in our business, we want to take a look at maybe something sold last week that hasn't published to the public record, right? So there's gonna be that little gap. Those properties may make or break your, your numbers, right? They may increase your, your ARV, they may decrease your ARV. So it's good to pay attention to that stuff. So we take a quick look at both, public record and MLS sold. We essentially do the same filters to kind of whittle it down to exactly, or more or less, what we're looking for in comparison to the subject property. All right, let's go ahead and do that. And then we, I believe, did 1,100 to 1,800. And it's by default, one mile radius. And we'll choose single family uh, here. 
No, see, and sometimes let's say, let's tell the audience, sometimes when you add additional filters, you filter your, your results out, right? And that just means it's not there. You don't have uh, properties to comp, right? So you have to expand the, the, the filter set. You have to open it up. What's the next best thing? That's right. why a lot, of, a lot of times people ask me, what's the magic sauce for ARVs? Well, it depends. And they're like, what do you mean it depends? It depends, right? It depends on your market. It depends on the understanding of how people are buying. It depends on what's going on in that particular um, market or, or neighborhood. It's a lot of variables, right? So as you get seasoned or more seasoned as an investor, you realize, you know, kind of the different variables that affect where you need to be on, you know, the buy price, the sell price, all those kinds of things. I like that. I really do. Actually, can I, can I, if you don't mind, I've been eyeing a property out here in Los Angeles. You don't mind if I actually type it in and have you uh, show us how you would run a comp on it? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Awesome, man. Um, so let me go ahead and type that in. Uh, out here in a city called Downey that I grew up in. Uh, founded Driving for Dollars. Um, looks pretty good, actually. Um, I, I noticed it didn't have any encumbrances on it. It was off market. Um, did have equity in there, but uh, yeah, show me how you would go about doing this. So um, just like you showed us earlier, you did do public records. And so I'm going to mimic um, how you kind of explained it to me and our audience. So I'm going to tighten it up, uh, go back just about six months. So uh, just like we did with the previous address, go to September. Um, and then this one's a 4-2. So we're going to tighten that up here. Look for some four twos. Yeah, and if you put in a four and you don't get fours, then you do you go down to threes, right? And, and there'll definitely be some three twos in that. And, and you know what's funny um, about this property is um, I did get word from a local realtor that the quote unquote fourth bedroom is really kind of like an office room that leads into the patio with a sliding door. Yeah, <laughs> so they don't have a you might be absolutely that. right yeah. that they were able to kind of get that fourth bedroom in because of that. So I like that you brought that up. I, again, you, you didn't even know about that, but that was some insider information. So to your point, you, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do the three twos. Uh, now you can see we have a lot of results. Um, and then earlier you did uh, tighten up the square footage, which I love that you did yeah. that. I, I would probably go, would probably go down to like 11, 11.50 and maybe uh, 15.50. Yeah. All right. It, it depends right. on the market. You can go plus or minus 100 or 200 you know, square feet. It, it, it kind of really just depends on where you are. Gotcha. Um, and this is a single family property. So mm -hmm. here we go. Um, so these are the results. Uh, and we can go down to, since we have several results, would it be okay if we go down a half a mile? No, I would, if, if, see right there, we went down to half mile and we only got one result. See, that makes to sense. me, that wouldn't really make sense to me. I'd like to have more properties to compare, right? So okay. I would leave it at maybe try 0.75, you know, if I wanted to get really close, but I would leave it here at, at one um, to really kind of take a look. Uh, that's, that's a good, good, good place to be. Yeah. Um, and scroll, I actually... scroll down a little bit. I want to show the audience to talk about number four. So number four is highlighted, right? Number four is a foreclosure property. So if you take a look at the sale price, that might right off the bat be a weird number, right? That number might be um, something that that's just kind of completely different than, than the rest of there. So I take a look at those first. I try to get an understanding of what happened here. This is a foreclosure. Do the numbers jive with the average rest of what's going on there or not? So sometimes I'll take that one out if, if it makes sense or not. Hold on, let me get it. No, here. no, that makes sense. And you're 461, right. 461, yeah, with exactly, exactly. With so the it's, public it's, record comps, it does show. And the importance here that a lot of people don't realize is that these are official comps from the county. But to Paul's point, they do also show off-market transactions, such as a foreclosure or cash transaction. And I like that you caught that because to your point, we're looking to get an ARV. For those that don't know what that is, it's an after repair value. And most properties that are going through a foreclosure sale, most of them probably need to be rehabbed. So right. this price right here is reflecting a price that's most likely as is. Well, also, so, if it was a foreclosure or it could have been a number of, of, of things that happened here, right? And it was, it was auctioned off, right? It was auctioned off cheap. These numbers are going to affect the other average sale prices. Right, so those outliers, high or low, I always take a look at that. And also if there's a specific situation, sales situation like that one is, I might take that out. In this case, I would certainly take that out. Right, And, and I like your point to that because to, to the opposite end, we do have one here that's hovering at 168. And what's the benefit, again, is some of these properties were previously on market so we can see things like the exterior, if this even makes sense. And, and again, to your point, when we see these anomalies, 
we can deselect them and then that leaves us with the remaining in this case although we got eight results we're down to six and that yeah. now averages our sell price throughout yeah the I, I might not do all eight or all, all six here i might do you know the the, the two the three I would kind of analyze the properties. What are the most like, right? Look at the square footage. If I could dial it in to have two or three that are the exact same square footage or plus or minus a very small amount, those are going to be the most comparable properties, right? So those are the ones I'm going to go with. Um, so I look at that, right? And I look at the columns. I might take out some of the columns. I can take a look. I compare the room, the bedroom, uh, bathroom, square footage, year built. Where are those parameters? Are they the same? If so, I'm going to use those as my comp and then select them and get our average sell price. To your point, um, I, I'm actually taking your advice as we're speaking. So I noticed that the property in question had 1300, your built was 1949. So I deselected anything that was erroneous. So the ones that I have now selected 1390, we have one that's 1388 another one that's 1390, and then the last one being 1348. And you notice right. most of the year builds were very similar to right. the subject property. It's perfect example right there. Those are close enough that those would be great comps, and I would, I would keep them selected and use those you know, to determine the public record comps. Now go to the MLS comp section. I love Let me that. Show you now, before the, we the do that, sections. I'm gonna go ahead and print this report out. <laughs> <laughs> Got to make sure I have something to show later on. Okay, so now we're going to jump over to MLS comps. And so MLS again, comps, we do the same thing, right? We do okay. what we did. We want to see what's sold in the MLS, right? You dial it in. When we're done here, we're going to look at the active comps. I'm going to explain to you why when, when we get there in a second. Oh, okay. Let me do this then. Let me put in my same parameters. Oh, we did 1150. And we're going to do 1550 here. And this time we're going to go for the active listings and single family residential. Um, actually, we might need to, here, I might be getting too specific here. Um, no, 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 no. Go back. Uh, what, what, yeah, keep it at active. I would, don't get so dialed in on the square footage. I want to take a general sense with the actives, right? I want to take a look at the general sense of what's for sale around that subject property. So open I these up, so. you know, I would do a half mile radius, right? And, and three, two would be fine. So I get an understanding of three, two and up, right? So it's the three, okay. two is the minimum. Nothing at a half minimum. mile, so we'll go to a mile. So here we go. Right. So now within the mile, I have these that are similar. I want to click on the, on the photo uh, button, please. There we go. And now we have a look into what this property looks like, right? So if it's on the market for whatever price, six, $700,000, does it merit that price, right? Has this been fully rehabbed? Is it in great condition or is it in rental rehab condition? Whatever it may be, this active section, looking at the photographs helps me get another sense of what's mm. going on in that general idea. So when I'm calculating my comps, I need to know, okay, if we're going to buy this, is this going to be a property that they're going to rehab, you know, to the nines because it's a, you know, people are, are going to, you know, retail buyers are going to live here, families going to live here for the next 30 years, or is this going to be bought as an investment property and uh, rent it out, right? So there's a difference in the level of rehab condition. And that's what the active area helps me determine by looking at those photographs. Ah, I like that. So you're, again, you're utilizing the photo to see if it's been rehabbed or if it's been uh, rehabbed enough to be a rental. And, you know, what's it look like for that price? What are the sellers in that immediate area asking for, right? That's a good point to keep in mind when trying to comp properties, uh, especially right now, right? So if people are, you'll, you'll pay attention to the, 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 the asking prices. You know, are those asking prices high? Are they low? Especially now, we'll, we'll see. Are, are there going to be fluctuations? Or are things going to stay where they are? I don't know. We'll see, right? Um, but this is where you're certainly going to be able to tell kind of, you know, what they're asking and, and what those look like for that asking price. I do like that. And here we do have one that's currently listed at 658. and looks very similar. So I like how you mentioned using active and using sold. Uh, sold gives you the value of properties that literally just sold within the last six months, whatever your time frame is. But I like how you mentioned active, giving you the idea or giving you the understanding how the market has fluctuated, right? Sold is telling you what the property is officially sold for, but active is telling you how the market is reacting the very day, this very moment. So, But also it, determining what people are selling properties for. Exactly. Them. That's the main thing, because if you're buying there, 
what else is being sold there, right? Because ultimately you're either going to buy and maybe assign a contract and wholesale it. Maybe you're going to buy it, hold it, rehab it. Ultimately, you want to know whether you're buyer or you, um, what's it need to look like to be sold for the prices that are being asked for in that immediate area. All right, so we ran comps on this property. We're using active. Um, shall I go and use the sold as well? Uh, yeah, well, sold, I definitely take a look at, you know, let's, let's go through here quickly. We obviously look at solds. We filter down. We want to take a look at maybe something sold within, you know, the last week or two that isn't yet recorded on public record uh, for whatever many, many reasons, right? The county just delays and recording and um, there's a million and one variables that can happen there. But this is a good way to make sure to see if there's anything that hasn't immediately been posted, um, hasn't sold or uh, has sold that may affect your overall ARV or offer price. Let's go into the list building section right now because I want to so. really kind of get into what we're doing with uh, building lists, specifically building cash buyer lists right now. Is there a specific market that you'd like to jump into, Paul? Just pick in anywhere, man. Again, you're, okay. you're good at picking these random spots, so let's see. <laughs> we'll do the roulette here. Riverside cities. County. All right, Riverside County. This is familiar. We're not too far away here. Um, so, so what I do, and like I mentioned earlier, when we, when we first started the call, um, we want to shore up our buyer list, our buyer pool. We want to understand who else is out there that we haven't communicated with. The name of the game for me right now, and my suggestion to investors out there is talk to people, right? Talk to investors, talk to them and figure out where they are. Let them know where you are, right? In your business and your desire to do business and to do business with them. Maybe they'll tell you, hey, yeah, I'm, you know, blinders on, we're going straight forward, nothing's slowed, nothing's changed, fantastic. I want you on my list because I'm gonna send you the next property we have, right? So let's get into the filter uh, section if we can, right? So simply, what I do, what we're doing right now is we're going real wide. In the, in the counties that we're marketing, I wanna reach out to the most recent cash buyers uh, of, of, of the moment, right? So anybody that has bought, uh, and let's filter this down to single family. So go to property characteristics. Let's go to property type and go single family. Because I'm, I'm specifically in this example, I'm specifically looking for cash buyers of single family properties. Okay. You could, I would even say this, if you wanted to get super specific, maybe you're looking for cash buyers of a certain type of property. I know cash buyers out there that won't buy uh, one ones, right? They won't buy anything under a certain footprint or square footage. Uh, maybe you want to filter that, that down, but what we're doing is we're going pretty broad. I want to now know cash buyers that have bought in the last 12 months. Okay. I like that. So let's go back exactly a year, March 21st here and boom, it looks, looks like we have 2000 results in this county right. over here. In so these are cash transactions, right? These necessary, these might ne necessarily be you know, the, the, the cream of the crop or whatever it may be. But I think it would be a good exercise to, to either take this entire list, if you have the ability to, to call, get the numbers, which we can in here for the individual owners, right? And even the LLCs, uh, we can talk about how we can do that. Um, outside of here, unfortunately, we can't get LLC uh, skip trace right inside right. of PropStream. But there are ways. And those ways are the ways that you should reach out, make contact, so ask them, hey, are you actively buying right now? Where's your head today? You know, are you interested in maybe taking a look at some of the deals I have now or coming up in the next week or two? You know, that's the conversation that you want to have. So I would simply, you know, save this list. Um, show, you know, let's show them here. Let's save this list. I would save this list here. And um, All right. We, we, there's two ways you can do what we just did, right? We just pulled an entire list that's a mix of individuals and a mix of corporate, of corporate and trust, whatever it may be. You can take that list now that you have it and actually sort it by that difference, right? Uh, we, inside of PropStream, when you can show them, we can obviously skip trace. And yep. you're going to be able to get results for the individually owned uh, cash buyers, right? So you're going to get the names inside of PropStream. We'll be able to pull up that list here. We'll be able to initiate it and run it through the entire uh, sequence here to pick your list and pick your, your amount, whether it's email or that phone number or, you know, whatever it is that you want to pull out of here. And then 
literally directly be able to contact them. I, I really suggest picking up the phone directly and making a phone call. You know, some people are using some mass ways of reaching out. You know, obviously we have some, some ways inside of our platform as well, but I simply would just, you know, pick up your cell phone and dial, let them know what you're doing, what you're thinking and you know, what, what you would like to do. If they're either uh, interested or they're not, and then you move on to the next. This might be an activity that, that you could really get doing uh, now while you're home. You know, you have, what, what else do you have to do right now but get on the phone and start calling some people, right? Exactly, right. Or I like you could that. hand this off over to you know, a team member, an assistant, a VA, that can actually start doing those calls for you as well. Like, let them know, hey, we're you know, interested in you know, finding out what you're doing right now. Uh, we are actively buying and selling properties. Uh, what are you looking to do, sir? That makes a lot of sense. So guys, yeah, skip tracing is in prop stream so we can build a list, skip trace it. Uh, just to let you guys skip tracing results usually come within about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, you can find them in the contacts page uh, as you see here. Uh, so yeah, thanks for showing us how to build a buyer's list, uh, saving it, the importance of obviously building relationships right now and talking to these buyers especially with this COVID-19 uh, issue that's going on right now. Let me throw um, in so this last nugget right here. Um, and I want to also let folks know that there is a way to get LLC information, right? Like some people, if you can't skip trace it because it's an LLC, you're like, oh no, I can't do it. Unfortunately, we're not there yet with inside of PropStream to be able to get that LLC information. But if you do have the list that you've generated, you can export that list of LLCs and you can take a look and see if your state um, state recorder, depending on the, on the various states, um, they're going to have a website where you can actually search the LLC and it's going to come back with the manager or the members names, which you can then go and, and, you know, do the research and get their numbers and reach out to them that way. So that's a little bit of a shortcut for anybody that wants to reach out to those LLCs, which I, I highly suggest because LLCs tend to be the more professional buyers, uh, the guys that might heavily be, uh, still in the game right now and not phased by what's going on. Or not so give them a call and see what's going on there boom that that was value um, that was a big gem right there um, so now that we've show, you've shown us how to build comps um, or run comps you've showed us how to build the buyers list and the importance of why building a buyers list is important in this very atmosphere that we're in today anything else you'd like to show us that is important um, otherwise uh, we can definitely let people know if you have any last words like that you like to share any last minute advice or last advice to us investors. We would love to hear what you have to say. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I would kind of leave you with this, Burton. Um, I, I think stay active right now. You know, stay on your game right now. You know, if you guys are in business and you have marketing going out, you know, really make sure you don't fall back and you stop your, your marketing. Uh, make sure what makes the most sense right now. Uh, as well, right? How are you making the best contact? There's going to be different channels that are, are better than others. There's a lot of people home right now, right? So getting a hold of people at home might be easier. Um, you know, so, so be aware of that stuff. Definitely shore up your, your buyers. Definitely reach out, communicate, and talk with people, find out what's going on. And more, you know, most importantly, really just kind of be aware of what's going on, listen, and uh, you know, communicate with others that you know are, are in the business to see uh, you know, what they see and hear out there as well. Man, talk about value. Thank you, Paul, so much for your time. Um, also, guys, um, for those of you that uh, haven't already, Make sure to follow him on, and Paul, I'll let you go. Do you have any social media channels that you'd like us to know about? Man, you, you get, everybody knows they can just throw my name in there, Paul Opozo, and then the interwebs, you'll find me. I'm just out there. If you have a, a question about, you know, wholesaling or, uh, you know, prop stream or anything in between, um, I'm really easy to find, and, uh, you know, I love getting questions, and uh, I'll, I'll respond to anything you guys shoot me if, if you want to reach out. Well, thank you so much again, and thanks again, Paul. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Please tune in for more videos and more interviews.